Understanding the PLC operating cycle is fundamental to learning how the PLC runs the logic in a user developed program. There are some differences between the operating cycle of older and newer PLC technologies, but this is a good opportunity to explain how the base operating cycle works. The input scan at the top of the cycle reads and stores the value of input devices. For example, if a start or stop button is being pushed, that value will be stored as a 1 or a 0. During the program scan, the PLC uses the stored value of devices to solve the logic in each rung. If the logic solves true, the PLC updates the output image with a 1. If it solves false, the output image becomes a 0. Understand that it's updating the output image and not the actual outputs. During the output scan, the output image is transferred to the external output circuits, turning the output devices on and off. During the maintenance or housekeeping task, the PLC performs functions like communicating with variable frequency drives or human machine interfaces. It also performs internal checks and verifies that it didn't take too long to execute the program. Once all of this is complete, it restarts a new scan. The amount of time it takes for the PLC to go through this cycle is referred to as scan time. Depending on the size of the program and the age of the technology, scan times are typically measured in milliseconds. Newer technology has driven scan times down to microseconds for the equivalent size programs. The earliest PLCs are direct ancestors of hardwired relay logic, so it makes sense that the dominant programming language has been relay ladder logic. Ladder logic differs only slightly from relay diagram. With relay logic, there are contacts that open and close on the left that will turn coils on and off on the right. PLCs use that same concept. A PLC considers the items on the left to be conditional instructions. When those instructions solve true, the outputs on the right will activate. So how is logic solved? It is simply understanding how the PLC scans the ladder logic. When it is scanning logic, it moves left to right and then top to bottom. Rung zero with a single input condition will be scanned and the result will either be true or false. If true, the output on rung zero will be on. If false, the output will be off. Then it moves down one rung and scans the two input conditions. If the result solves true, the output on rung one will be on. And if it solves false, the output will be off. The program scan continues in this manner until reaching rung five. Then the output image will be applied to the circuits in the output scan. So how do the input conditions solve to be true or false? Let's start by moving through the top rung, starting with the first input condition. That condition is true, so we move to the second input condition. That condition is false, so the rest of the two conditions are false. There is no logical continuity, so the output is off. With the second rung, both input conditions are true. We have logical continuity, so the result is true and the output will be on. This rung uses the logical AND condition. It shows both input 4 and input 5 conditions as true, so output 0 is on. Several input conditions can be arranged in a series, and if all solve true, then of course the output is on. These rungs show the logical OR condition. In the top rung, input 4 is true, so the result is true, and the output is on. Input 5 is off, but it has no effect on logical continuity because the PLC scans from left to right, top to bottom. Conversely, the lower rung shows input 4 as false, so the scan drops to the branch containing input 5. Because input 5 is true, the rung solves true and the output is on. Once again, the scan is left to right, top to bottom. We won't take the time to work through the possible outcomes with this complex arrangement of ands and ors. Just keep in mind that any false input condition will cause the scan to drop down to the branch below it. For example, at the top of the rung, if all the conditions to the left of input 9 are true and input 9 is false, the scan will back up and drop down to input 1 in the first branch level. Here is the last piece of the puzzle. What causes an input condition to evaluate true or false? 
The two most basic ladder logic instructions are the examine on and the examine off instructions. These are also called examine if closed and examine if open. We are going to go back to how the PLC monitors digital input devices. The limit switch wired to input 5 is open, so there's no electrical flow to terminal 5. The value of input 5 stored in bool tag is 0. The PLC will solve the examine on condition as false when it is found in the logic. If input 5 is used with an examine off instruction, it will evaluate as true because it is off. The limit switch closes and we now have electrical flow to terminal 5. The value is now 1, so the examine on condition will solve true and the examine off condition solves false. The OTE output instruction is easy to understand because it will either be on or off based on how the PLC solves the related input conditions. If the rung solves true, the output is on, and if it solves false, it's off. There are two other output instructions worth noting. The output latch, or OTL, allows a rung of ladder logic to solve true and turn the output on. In subsequent scans of the logic, the rung can solve false, but the output will continue to stay on. To turn off the OTL, an output unlatch, or OTU, instruction is used in a different rung. When that rung solves true, the OTU will turn on and the unlatch the original OTL. At that point, the output will turn off. A timer is the most complex instruction we will cover. As an example, let's say a motor is required to run for 10 seconds and then turn off. In that case, the timer preset value will be 10 seconds. As long as the input condition solves true, the accumulation value will increment until it equals the preset value. At that point, the timer qubit, also referred to as the dumb bit, will change from 0 to 1. When the input condition for the timer solves false, the timer accumulation value resets to zero, and the done bit is also set to zero. This can happen before or after the accumulation value equals the preset value. Understand there are multiple types of timer instructions that operate differently than what I just described. Going back to the motor example, when the start push button is pushed, it will solve true because an examine on instruction is used. The stop button is not being pushed, so it will solve true because an examine off instruction is being used. Same with the motor run timer qubit. As long as the timer is not done, the qubit will be true. The rung will solve true and the motor one output will turn on. The problem with this logic is that when the start button is released, the motor will stop. To keep the motor running after the start button is released, the motor one output bit is used as an examine on instruction in a branch around the start button. The motor one bit will be true in the very next program scan after it is turned on. This is known as a ceiling circuit. On the next rung, motor one will be true, which will cause the timer instruction to start timing. When the accumulation value, shown as dot ET, is equal to the preset value, shown as dot PT, the qubit will change from 0 to 1. In the first rung, the motor will run as long as the qubit is equal to 0. Now that the qubit is equal to 1, the logic solves false and the motor will turn off.